Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to implement net data on FreeNAS. Now, if you haven't heard about net data, you definitely want to stay tuned. And if you have heard about it, here's another way or another device that you can run on that I think you're really going to like what you see. But stay tuned for more details. This content is also available as an Amazon Flash Briefing or podcast. Please go to TechBytesWithRonNutter.com for more information for any items mentioned in this episode. There are affiliate links in the description. If you will click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, just to review things, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get net data installed. It's very uh, quick and easy to do, and you don't have to stay to the Holiday Inn Express in order to figure out how. Then we're going to show you briefly how to use it, and it's pretty self-explanatory. But let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to switch over to the desktop, and what we'll want to go and do is we'll actually go down here to plugins. Now, by default, it comes up on IX Systems. We will change that to Community. And it may take it a second to refresh, and then we'll go over here, and we'll click on that little icon, Net Data. And then we will click on Install. And it says, okay, it's an unofficial plugin, but, you know, okay, FreeNAS isn't writing it, but at least... It's something that will work on her. So we'll click on continue and we'll give it a jail name. There are jails and VMs. This one doesn't require a whole operating system to be installed. It's leveraging what's already on there. But that's going to be a subject for another time. So we'll call this one net data. And oh, okay, it doesn't let us do that. So that's fine. I thought it did, but I tried this once before. Anyway, so. Now we'll go ahead and get the process started and it won't take too long. And I'm going to show you a little, not, not a trick, but if it gives you an address that doesn't look like one, then I'll show you how we're going to handle that one. By default, of course, it's running inside of FreeNAS. So it, it may pop up with a message saying, to access this, uh, go to 172.16.0 something slash 19999. Well, if you've worked with net data on other platforms, the 19999 is something that will ring a bell. But don't worry about the address. If it does that to you and gives you a 172 address and that's not what you're using, okay, that's the internal addressing range that's being used within FreeNAS. All you have to do is if you notice uh, the address that I'm running mine on, 10.0.1.226, use that address. It will translate over and work just fine. As you can see, it's going to be done here in just a second. And then we'll be able to go ahead and move over to it. Of course, it's day of instant gratification. We all want things now. So it, uh, here we go. Now, here's what I was talking about. And this is what it did to me the uh, first time that it, uh, it came up and it sees the 172.16.02. Okay, that's an internal range within FreeNAS. Don't worry about it. We'll click on close. And see, by the time it refreshes, it's already straightened that out. So what we'll go through and do here is open up another tab, of course. 10.0.1.226. And there's already in the browser. Okay, well, I didn't type it right. So HTTP 10.0.1.226 colon 19999. Okay, and it comes up right away. Let me drop that off the bit. So the, can you get some of this information within the FreeNAS pages? Yes. What this does is it gives you a little more detail and sometimes gives you better detail on what's going on right off the top. I mean, this is 
showing you your CPU usage, gives you your, your disk activity. If it's using a swap file, your network inbound and outbound activity, and just as importantly, if not more importantly, the RAM. So this is a good kind of a, well, not a desktop, but a kind of an info panel on what to do. And it, you see it goes into more detail down here as to the load, what the CPU is doing, your disk activity, how RAM's being utilized. And of course, we've just had this up and running for a few minutes, so it's really not going to show us that much. But over time, and this is the big thing, over time, is where this is really going to help and it's minimal overhead i've had it on my free nas box and haven't noticed a significant uh load to anything or lag so really this is something that is going to be very handy to have and it definitely is the uh well, i'll get to the right button here it's handy to have because it gives you a little more information than gives you some information that the control panel within FreeNAS just isn't equipped to do. So it helps you just keep from getting surprised if you have things are getting sluggish. You can see if the quick, quickly if the CPU is overloaded, if you're using every bit of available RAM. So really, this is something that it should be on every FreeNAS box, and I'm probably looking at setting up a second one here at some point later this year. And guess what? It's going on that too. You've probably heard about NetData if you've been watching my channel a little bit because I've talked about doing this on the Raspberry Pis and anything else that I've got running in my smart home environment. So really, this is something that is a good thing to have. It's free. It's easy to put on. And you saw all it took to get it up and running and what the information it's already giving it over time it's going to show you even more. So really, this is something that is a good thing to have, and at least it gives you confirming information over what the control panel will do or the, the management interface within FreeNAS. So it doesn't hurt. It at least gives you confirming information. And you can, you know, you may decide it's not that much of a help to you, and you can uninstall it. You can also find out how there's some more things you can probably get turned on. I've been using just the stock NetData install, and I've been very pleased with it. So it's very much something that, especially when you're making major changes to your FreeNAS installation, is probably a good thing to at least have in your background. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos to the right or to the left that are next ones that you'll want to watch or that content that YouTube has identified you may be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.